Amen. And that you are settled down and settling in um, for tonight's Bible study. Ask that you find you a nice, quiet place. Amen. Um, to kind of tune in and to become a part of tonight's discussion. Don't just be a spectator. Amen. Or participate as normal. We say you are welcome to come onto the platform. So we'd like to see you here and help make this discussion a lively discussion. All right, with that being said, I'm going to start with prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your kindness, your grace, and your mercy, and your love towards us. Thank you, Lord, for your favor. We thank you, Lord, for, for waking us this morning. We thank you, Lord, for our life, for our health, for our strength. We thank you, Lord, for um, our jobs and for allowing us to understand who we are in you and for our purpose and allowing us to go about today's activities fulfilling purpose. We thank you, Lord, for the resources that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for the finances that are coming into our hands, God. We thank you, Lord, for the stamina that we need to go about today's activities. We thank you, God, for making crooked ways straight, God, and for closing doors that should be closed and opening doors that should be open for us, God. We thank you, Lord, for leading and guiding us and directing our paths, God. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to our spirit, God. We thank you, Lord, for directing us, God. We bless you, God. We bless you for our families. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. And we honor you just because who you are in our lives. God, now as we go into this Bible study, God, I ask that you speak through our hearts, speak through our minds, speak through our lips. God, I thank you, Lord, that this word will come out unhindered, unchecked by any outside force. God, I thank you, Lord, right now. I come against any glitches in technology and in the airways, God. We dispatch angels to stand guard and make sure that this work goes forward in Jesus name. God, I thank you, Lord, that the hearts and minds are prepared of the people and that their so, that their hearts are good ground so that this work will go in and it will um, produce great fruit. God, I thank you, Lord, right now that if signs, wonders and miracles will be in our lives um, that will follow this word preached and that's being taught today. God, I thank you, Lord, for a cohesive discussion, God. I thank you, Lord, right now for the thoughts of the speakers flowing freely, God. I ask, that, Lord, that you touch our pastor in his mind and strengthen his body. God, that he may teach and speak what you would have him to teach. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. So we thank you guys, everybody, for being on today. Looks like we have a full house tonight in terms of our panel. Pastor Ben, you have something you want to say before we start bringing everybody on? No, let's do it. Okay, so first up, we've got Brother Vincent. Good evening. Well, let's see if I can hit the buttons right. Good evening. What's going on, man? Next up, we have Miss Kayla. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Hey, woman of God. Next up, we have Brother Mark. Good evening, good evening, good evening. What's going on, man? God. Last but not least, we have Jelana. Good evening, good evening, good evening. The emissary. <laughs> you know what? As I was pulling you all on, you know, as much as we've been on, this is the first time I noticed that when you pull people on, it puts you in alphabetical order. I never realized that. That's quite interesting. Well, I thought it did, but Mark doesn't look, Ember doesn't come before Jay. So I don't know what, how it puts you in order. <laughs> how, I was thinking that's what it does, but evidently it's not. Okay. How are y'all doing today? I love you all so much, um, and I want to, for all the people who are tuning in, they should be in now, it's it's, a, it's a, about five after seven, I, I like to explain myself for people who are coming in from a, different places or will see this later, I like to explain myself. On Sunday, we are talking about the your being like God, the, the, the greatness that's in you, the glory that's in you, and that if God is six six foot one, then he made you six feet tall. On uh, life application, we're talking presently about pain because we want to effectively manage that. And at some point in life, you're going to be pained in one form or another. So how to manage that? And on Bible study, we're talking about the various groups, the, the various areas of your human life and how you can have constant victory and breakthrough. 
because the theme of our year is perpetual breakthrough, 2024, perpetual breakthrough. So I'm trying to have, my goal is to have these kinds of conversations so that you will have breakthrough. And so with this, we're still focused on family. First, it was communication. Then it was step families. Tonight, we're going to talk about single mothers. And this is important because some of the, some of the ladies some one of the ladies contacted me and talked to, and, and asked me about that. And I said, well, that was part of our agenda that we wanted to uh, talk about single, single mothers in uh, uh, our Bible study, because we want the single mothers to be in a state of victory and breakthrough. Um, every category of people and places, we want you to be coming to breakthrough, but you got to be here and you got to um, use the principle. You can't just learn it and say, ooh, ah, well, that makes sense. You got to use it. Amen? So my question is, are we talking about single mothers or single parents? Predominantly single Predominantly single mothers. Okay, so um, not really single fathers. Not really. I mean, the, uh, there are single fathers. However, the proportion of single fathers to single mothers is really, really broad. However, um, we can include single fathers in the same, in the same, um, uh, discussion. So we're not we're not kicking single fathers to the curb. We can you we some of these same exact things belong to single fathers. So we're not kicking fathers to the curb. Don't feel like that. But we can incorporate them in this. And and if the single fathers are interested in their own focal point, we could do that too. For Bible study, I urge you to call, say what you need so that we can we can we can address that particular area of principles so that you can Go away, and when you leave here, you have victor victory in those every areas of your life. All right. Now, I have some I, some things that I wanted to touch. I believe the single mother issue is big enough to go this tonight and next Wednesday. So I think we're going to do two on this. But what I want to do is I have uh, a few ideas I wanted to kind of bring forward. But I, but I don't want those ideas to stifle you in your communication, in your ideas, because this the panel is not put together to just, the panel is put together for all of the collective ideas of, of, of your, that I know your greatness. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm not looking for you to just go along with this and say, well, you started with this, so I didn't say it. Please don't do that. Okay, that's not what this is for. This is, this is for, uh, communication because somewhere today the Lord spoke to your heart about something and either you've been there, you know about it, you, you have something to say. So my request is that you would please say it. Amen. All right. Now, but I want to run into a couple of things. Uh, uh, Lamar, can you hit me with uh, that first? The, thank you. Uh, single mothers and the principles of the kingdom. I really, really want the mothers, the single mothers, and and as you brought out, honey, the single fathers, to be able to grasp these principles and create victory in their life. Now, when we start talking about certain things, like we were talking about pain, and we've been there, how to manage it, we've been there for a couple of weeks now. Whenever we bring out the idea of pain, or church hurt, or uh, hurt at home and, uh, you know, recovering from different kinds of emotional and mental stressors. When we do that, we tend towards the, hum the humanity and not the divinity. So when we come here to talk to our these beautiful women of God who are in this particular situation, maybe they're a widow, maybe they're divorced, maybe they've never been married, but they are single mothers. When we When we start engaging this, I want you to grab the principles of these things and I want you to execute the principle, but, but I'm not going to cater to our humanity as much as I will be focusing on our divinity. Amen. Because we, we've got to give strong principles and this is a very tough subject and some things I'm going to have to say, but I want victory in every one of their lives. All right, go to the next one, Lamar. And then we're going to stop for a second. This is what I wanted people to see. Um, in Psalms 68 and 5, you see God is devoted. He is devoted to the widow and to the fatherless. He is devoted. And people say, well, that's a, that's a widow. Doesn't matter. If it's a, if for whatever reason, this, this woman is, doesn't have a husband and she has children, she is a single mother. Whether it be a widow, whether it be a, a divorce, she is still a single mother. 
Now let's look at Hagar. God opened her eyes and she saw her provisions, Genesis 21 and 19. She saw it, but God had to open her eyes. So if God is not, if God doesn't, if you don't allow the Lord to work with you, sometimes you may not see your provisions and then you'll make decisions off of blindness. The widow at Zarephath, God trusted her with the prophet. He told, he told Elijah, he said, uh, Elisha, he said, I've commanded a widow woman to sustain you. So in the inside of many of these single mothers is a command of God that will override the difficulties that they're experiencing. I need you to hear me. There is a command of God in you, women of God, that will override the difficulties of your moments right now. And the last one is the widow with the oil. And this is the power of, the, of a woman in business. So this is where the prophet prophesied to her, gave her specific instructions. She opened up a small business, made enough money to pay off all the debts and retire. Uh, money and children and her children, her money and her children are things that, that, that frequently put the single mother in a state of, oh my God. Amen. All right. Close that out, Lamar. Thank you so much. All right. Let's talk. Talk to me. So when I think about those three scriptures that you gave, those three biblical examples, um, what comes to my mind is it doesn't matter what situation you are in. God addresses it. He addresses it. And you always come out on top. Absolutely. So... My statement is not so much about single mothers, although that's what we're talking about, but you can't use your situation or circumstances in life as an excuse. And that's that's what I see when I when you when you immediately point point out those three those three, are powerful. Those, those three points. And granted that you've got to know what those three points are, and maybe mm -hmm. we might need to discuss them in more detail. But when I look at those three examples of women. All of them, even though they had difficult circumstances, God did not allow their circumstances to be a hindrance to them or an excuse. And they had to rise up beyond them because God is with them. Amen. And so that's the for that. So immediately that was the first thing. So it doesn't matter because a lot of times we want to use, you know, whatever it is that we're dealing with as a reason for our not progressing. And in all three of those situations, they were able to progress. So my first thing would, my first thought as we're discussing this, I would encourage anybody, and in particular single mothers, to not allow the difficulties that you may face, because nobody's saying you don't have difficult Amen. moments. Amen, amen. But don't allow those difficult moments or the difficult situations that you're in to cause you to be limited and stay in a place of, of lack, of disappointment, of, of um, you know, just not being happy, not being prosperous, not having the things that you want in life. Um, you can't allow your circumstances to dictate your future. I guess that's a good way to say it. Because in all of those three examples, their future was great, regardless of what their circumstances looked like or what their start was. So I would say just, dig into these principles and then meditate on these because the word says in Joshua 1 verse 4 5 it says meditate on this word day and night then you can make your way prosperous and then you can have good success so I would maybe take one of these examples here and really study the the story that uh, resonates with you the most and meditate on that and, uh, and pull the principles out of it, then begin to live by it, because then you would make your way prosperous and have good success. Yeah. Um, that would be my opening thought, you know, because I think those are powerful, powerful, powerful examples that you gave. Yeah. And uh, i like to caveat with what, what Lady Joyce said. And, and as you look at these uh, examples of single, uh, single mothers, um, I don't recall reading it, and I'm sure maybe, Pastor, you're going to get into it later. But uh, as Lady Joy was saying, understanding, you know, the environment and things like that and, and not letting these things hinder you from being victorious. 
Uh, one of the other key things that I've noticed, even, even in today, uh, you hear a lot about I'm a single mother with children and this and that and so forth. And then sometimes they would use the children as a crutch uh, for not being victorious. So I don't see an example here, and, I, and I'm not sure if you're going to get into that, Pastor, where these single women are, have one, they have a relationship with God or prophets of God, uh, some kind of relationship where they're listening and hearing what God has to say to them. Uh, and I don't recall any point in time, you know, if you do have children and you're a single mother, not allowing the children to be the blame or the excuse of why you're not victorious or you're stuck in a place where you are. Um, because the children are not that, 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 that portion that should hold you from being victorious. Um, when I look at Hagar, Hagar never mentioned anything about, well, I got this child and this child is hindering me from something. Uh, nor did uh, the widow with the issue with the oil. She never said, hey, I have sons. You know, she mentioned that they would go into bondage, but she didn't say anything about the sons were going to stop her from doing what the prophet told her to do. So as you're listening to this and, and Pastor, you may be able to expound more on this, but I just wanted to bring that point up as Lady Joy was saying that, because as I've heard single mothers and even the single mothers in my hometown, I hear a lot of that. I'm a single mom. I only have one check. I only have this and that and so forth. And I can't do this and I can't do that as if the children are the problem, why they can't move forward or they can't um, be victorious. Thank you so much, man of God. Anyone else? Um, Go ahead. I want to comment about um, those three points. I think just from experience as a single mom at one point, you know, I think it really boils down to surrendering. I noticed that um, if we say that we are Christians and follow followers of, of Jesus Christ, I think the biggest thing is that we have to do what we say, right? Do what we, we say we believe. And I know it's not necessarily easy, but I remember there's been times where, um, um, where, it looked like things wasn't going to work out right or because it felt like I was alone because of the dynamics of the situation, just me and my daughter. But, you know, I know different dynamics because of different. Um, I know everybody who's single mother has different dynamics. Some people have a support system. Some people don't. But yeah. I noticed that when it looked like it wasn't any support, I really literally had to surrender to God and just say, you, you know, <laughs> OK, you know, um, you knew the desires of my heart. I wanted a child and this particular situation is happening, um, especially because the, the, the other parent um, sometimes wasn't easy to get along with. And at the end of the day, I had to surrender to it. But then the other part of that surrendering is that when things, after you surrender and things still look like it's not coming to play or it still look like something's happening, you can't take it back on. Like you can't um, try to do it yourself or you have to completely surrender, like do, surrendering to the point where you don't take it on yourself. If that makes any sense. I feel like I'm yes. rambling a little bit. No, no I, I understand what you're saying and you're making it very clear. And I wanted you to say, kind of help start this off because I know that you were, at, you know, uh, uh, years back, you were a single parent. I wanted you to start this off. I thank you for that. Uh, one of the things that we're not trying to do, like I say in when we start talking about pain, I always say we are not diminishing what the violation was or the heartbreak. We're not diminishing any of that. However, we're bringing principles that will bring success while one is in pain. So the same thing here. Let's look at Hagar for a second. Now, you remember. Oh, can we go pull the, it up so they can find the scripture? Uh, yes, yes, you can pull that up. Put, give it to me, give it to me, Lamar. Because that's what I was hoping okay. to do. If we can go now, in. Now, now, I'm going to, now, now, Hagar is, there's a, there's a, the whole dynamic is a, is a whole bunch of verses. It's a lot of verses, but it's just Genesis 21 and 19. But let's, uh, Lamar, can you go down, go down some? To the next one. Okay, um, yes, no, to the next one. Um, keep going, That's keep going, it. yep, keep going, keep going, <laughs> and one more. There Boom, there's that Egyptian. Um, 
Now, Genesis 21, let's read from verses 9 through 13, and then I have more verses after this. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne to, unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. Now, the, now I really want to say something about this particular portion of the text. The, the, um, uh, Abram's, Abraham's wife did not regard his child as his child when she spoke to him about his child. I'm going, we're going to move from this point, but this kind of be belongs in the blended family from last week. She didn't talk to him like it was his child. And then she kind of forced him into a decision, either this or that, versus bending as necessary so that he could have both if he needed to have both. So can we, can we put this in an example for, as the single mother, what we would say, what that would look like right now today is that you have a child and you are raising your child by yourself and the father's wife won't allow you to have, uh, won't allow him to see the child, won't allow him to pay child support, won't allow him to uh, come pick up the child on the weekends or during the week, won't allow your child to come stay with you during the summers, you know, uh, won't allow him uh, to help out raising it at any point. So all the burden is on you as a single mother. That's for the single mother who feels completely alone, like the father, is just nowhere in the picture. Right. And the father's not in the picture, not because the father's trifling. The father's not in the picture because he got married or he was already married or whatever the circumstances is and, that, and his wife won't allow him to participate in, 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 in the child's life that he has with you. That's what this single mother looks like. Amen. And the, verse 11 says, and the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight. Now look at this text closely because of his son. So, so his wife made him choose between her and his son, right? And God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, that's early teens, and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall all thy seed be called. Verse 13, and also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a great nation, uh, because he is thy seed. So God was reassuring Abraham's broken heart that he was going to do something with the boy and make him great. The boy would turn out great, but God was doing something with Abraham's heart at this point in time. Lamar hit me with the next one. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Now this is, I really want to stop at each one of these points. I really want communication. And I want to talk about these points. Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it into um, and gave it into the uh, Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. Now, I want to I want to I want you all to allow me to really have a conversation about because the Egyptian at that time, uh, Egypt right now today is Northern Africa. That's what it is. All right. The Egyptian at that time was a dark skinned woman. Okay. So there is something that is attempting to, to affect the heart of black women and put them in a particular status. And if you look at the data concerning this particular thing, how many children are born to single family mothers, uh, single mothers, if you look at the data, it's astronomical in the United States. What we're dealing with here is that same thing. Look at it. He gave her some water and some bread that ran out very quickly. In most cases, in most cases, the child support is not enough. Now, Mary J. Blige married Mary J. Blige married someone. Then when they got divorced, she pays him twenty thousand dollars a month. Now, I'm sure that's enough, but that's not normal. 
say amen. Amen. That's not normal. Okay. Under normal conditions, normal court conditions, it's not enough. This is a pattern here. And now let's go, let's go think a little bit more about Hagar. Hagar was powerless. Hagar was powerless. Now, part of the poverty has to do with the powerlessness in society. Hagar, there was no indication that she could do anything other than be the maid or the slave or whatever they want to call her. My, my beautiful Nubian princesses, we want to ensure that you don't become the powerless, the powerless, skillless woman in the society having children out of wedlock. Why does the reason, one of the reasons why Jelana does the coaching is so that everyone can get to the place where they long to be. And everyone, but you, but you got to come to it and you got to, you got to give out really what's in your heart and then you got to stick with it. You can't just come and, and uh, not do it or try to fix something the day before. So when she asks you, you can give her an answer. The, the level of accountability is strong because the goal is that you will miss this desert experience. God have mercy. Because Hagar was powerless, when they decided to use Hagar as a surrogate, they didn't ask her. Sarah said, take my maid. Because Sarah had power and Hagar had none. I am not I am not criticizing Father Abraham or our mother Sarah. I'm not doing that. I'm trying to focus in on how she got to that place. So this is why I don't want you skillless and powerless. I want you uh, to avoid this desert place, this place where where they're just using you and you don't have a voice in saying, no, I'm not doing that. Or I don't want to, I don't have no parts of that. I'm not doing that. I got my own destiny. I got my own forward motion. To avoid this, we, we got to get you empowered and skilled so that uh, uh, society won't make decisions and then force them on you. God have mercy. God have mercy. All right, if y'all with me, say amen. Somebody. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen sir. Amen, sir. Now, now take a look at this. Take a look at this. So the bottle was spent, and then the Bible says she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and as she went and sat her down over against him a good way off. This is the second thing a mother is struggling with, a single mother is struggling with. She's struggling with how the baby gonna turn out. Because what she did is she put the boy in one place and then she ran off to another place. And later on, when the angel starts talking to her, she said that she didn't want to see the death of the child. M single mothers are deeply concerned about how the children are and how they're going to turn out. God, she was concerned about that thing. That I might not see the death of the child. She was so concerned. But that is the concern of single mothers. How is my child going to turn out? And God heard the voice of the lad. Now the boy started crying. That speaks to our hearts of the stress that he's feeling from the family. So the boy starts crying. And then in verse 17, and God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, what aileth thee, Hagar? Tori. The reason why the angel addressed her after hearing the boy cry was because he needed to bring her to a point of healing so that she could help the boy and comfort him. If she's angry and hostile or afraid or emotional, what's going to happen is she's going to pass that on to the boy. Yes. That's why the angel said, I hear him crying, 
What's wrong with you? And so this is where often the, the, the single mothers don't take time to be emotionally or psychologically healthy themselves. They just keep trying to push through for the sake of the children. And then sometimes the misery and the heartbreak spills over into the child. Glory to God. That's why the angel said, I hear the boy crying, but I'm coming to you. And then he says, how are you doing? You know, the old folks used to say, what ailed he? He said, he's saying, how are you doing? So there's a point I've got to be healed. Versus instead of uh, uh, angry at my uh, 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 girlfriend or a woman angry at her boyfriend or ex-husband or estranged husband. At some point, there's got to be a healing or I'm going to pass this madness on to my child. Very true. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I was a very true. Yes. It's a decision. A it's daily a decision. decision. To heal. And to say, I'm not going to mess my child up with this. All right. Maybe First an hourly. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Go ahead, woman of God. What are you going to say? No, no, no. I say it might be an hourly decision because. <laughs> yeah, you, you because you're right. It will transfer to your child and the way your relationships are. And we, you know, last week you talked about communication, and so what it's very important to make sure that the communication is extremely healthy with the opposite parent. However, if the opposite parent don't want healthy communication, I believe I, I had to take a stand for myself and real and maybe. Amen. Suffer the consequences, but I didn't. But I pretty much just demanded respect that if, in order for us to have any type of conversation, you cannot call me out of my, you know, name, or you couldn't say certain things to me. And if you cannot do that, then we cannot have a conversation. So you really, yeah, that's why I said it has to be at a place of heal. A very, it's a conscious decision daily or every day to, um, to, to do your part. Um, when it comes to the healing part of it. Amen. And, and go, go ahead, honey. So one of the things I, I, I'm realizing, and, and to your point, is that it is a decision every day to decide to live by the, what, the principle, but by these principles. And so you literally have to grab a principle and talk to yourself Amen. about that principle Amen. every single day. There's one principle right now that I'm stuck on for myself in this year. I made a decision about this at the beginning of the year. And every day I talk to myself about it every single day. And you have to keep whatever principle it is. And, and that's why I, went, I started off by saying, hey, these are three situations where there was victory, regardless of the circumstance. So as we're talking, Find the principle that you can grab onto and then do what Jelana said. It's a decision every single day to take that principle and make a decision when you wake up. I'm going to live by it. I'm going to live by it. I'm going to live by it. That's the only way this works. When God, I share with you all what happened with how I felt about my ex-wife, but without knowing it. Y'all remember that? Was that intense? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Well, once God revealed to me how much I hated her, he started working with me. And then he systematically brought me all the way to the point where he said, finally, oh, this is all your fault. The reason he could finally walk me to that point is because I was willing to go on the journey. Mm -hmm. Once I understood what the problem was, I was willing to go on the journey. So when you're talking about forgiveness, you have to be willing to take that journey with God. Now, now, every time we talk about sensitive things, we tend towards our humanity versus tending towards the divinity. So we are not, uh, uh, um, we are not taking away the, 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 difficult, the difficulties of attempting to be a good mother by yourself do the right things, move in the right. We're not taking that away from anyone. But what I'm attempting to do with, with, uh, with love and compassion, I'm attempting to point you to the principle that created success for these biblical, historical persons. You said something, I think it was Sunday, uh, you were talking about the pain. And so and you, and you, you started off um, 
life application class talking about if you know what it is that you're striving for I'm, I, I'm not saying it the way you said it but this was the gist of it when you have when you know what it is that you're striving for it is it, and you can see it right I know you are about. willing to do what is necessary right then and endure whatever is necessary right then to get there so what we're saying here is these three examples right. are what the end looks like right and because these are i want to i want people to understand when you get to my points that i'm making here these are very powerful points so i'm not i'm not making the the single mother a victim i'm not speaking from that perspective no you're that's not that's it. not the that's not the perspective that i'm speaking from now look at verse 17 and god heard the voice of the lad and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee? What aileth thee, Hagar? He called her name. Why? What's going on? Now he heard the boy crying, Jelana. The, the misery of the, the heartbreak of the child. He's in this new crazy environment. What happened? We were comfortable uh, uh, several weeks ago. Now I mean, we're in the desert. It's hot. Where, where are we going to eat? So the child being thrust into this new environment, the child was heartbroken. The child was afraid. Now, here goes the angel. Some will tell you that this was not an angel speaking out of heaven, but this was an appearance of Christ before Calvary called a theophany. Some would say that this is Jesus speaking from heaven saying, hey, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Talk to me. And as now watch this, whatever the and then he has to comfort Hagar. He says, fear not, for God has has heard the voice of the lad where he is. So here, Hagar is being reassured that God knows where the boy is. So now, now she's, she feels better. Now, because she feels better, watch this in verse 18. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him in your hand. Oh my God. Look at, so now, now, I can effectively transfer or show the right kind of love because I'm better. And I can now show the child the proper type of loving without bias and madness. I can show the child the proper type of loving. I want you to get this because, because the angel dealt with her before he told her to, to go get the child. So some... I'm coming, man of God. Sometimes, if we're not careful, we'll let the anger linger. And because, now remember, I told y'all, I told y'all, I said I was uh, hit, punched, kicked, scratched. She would go out sometimes and wouldn't come back to the next day. I experienced a whole lot of pain. So I want people to understand, I know how it is to be in great pain and then systematically become better so that I can learn to effectively love. So I want you to hear this. And I'm gonna get to the close of this and then Vincent, I'm coming. He said, lift up the lad, hold him in your hand for I will make him a great nation. So he comes back again now and he comforts her heart concerning the present and the future of the child. Now watch this, watch this last part here. And God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. The well speaks of sustenance. God opened her eyes. Can I, can I say something about that in verse hold, 19? Hold, hold up, hold up. Let me let, let Vincent go, and then we're going to come back. I want people to understand God loved her so much till he was not going to let her die in that wilderness. And God loves you, women of God, so much. You are not going to die in the wilderness. And God is going to open up your eyes to a business, to a franchise, to, to education, to something that pushes you beyond where you happen to be at this moment. God is going to open up your eyes. So this is, this is watch this. He heals her. The, the child cries. He heals her. Tells her to comfort the child. Now there's mutual love and healthy love and comfort. Now he's now he comes around and says, I'm going to open up your eyes. If he opened her, her eyes while she's angry, 
She just going to say, I don't need that ninja. Look at here. Look what God doing for me. That's not, that's a bad attitude. He's being healed, now being whole, now seeing the provision of God because God is in love with you. Now, Vincent, go. Well, I'll, if you don't mind, Pastor, I'd rather Lady Joy go and talk about that. But my question is, is still about this, but it's in a different capacity. So if Lady Joy has something to say about that scripture, I'll let her go so she okay. can get her thought and make it run continuously with yours. Go, honey. Thank you. So if we go back to that and God opened her eyes, when you look at that, that mean that that says to, to me and she saw a well of water. The water was there all along. But she didn't know it. So what that's saying to me is that our provision is mm -hmm. already there. Our provision, we know that anything Amen. that God has done for anything that God has for us is already done, it's already there. And we can't see it because we're allowing right. our circumstances to blind us to it. Right. So if we get over our situations, if we do the work, forgive, if we do the work and not allow the wrong people in our ears, not allow people to cloud our vision, we'll be able to get out of these situations that we're in a lot sooner. Because when you look at that and God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water, well, she didn't, did she move? Did she walk anywhere? Did she go anyplace? No, all that happened was her eyes were open and the well of water was there. So that meant the well of water was there when her eyes was what? Closed. Mm -hmm. So God is going to, so God has provision near you. Right now. Single mother, right, right now. now. That's and my point. God is going to, and God is going to open your eyes. There's, we have three different examples and they're going to give more, but we have three different examples. One of the ways, this is the principle. One of the ways that God provides sustenance, even in a desert situation, is that he heals me. I experience healthy love, and now he opens my eyes. So I want you to see this pattern here, because some of you are going to be healed. The child is going to be wonderful, and God is going to open your eyes to something that will overflow your life. Do you hear what I'm saying? Vincent, I Vincent. Say, when you say you're going, to, going to be healed, the reason why this is important is because sometimes we hang on to things and we don't want to be healed. We say it with our mouths, but our posture is not to seek it out. It's not to do the work to be healed. And we have to want that. Right. And you have to want, uh, you, you can't just say, well, I want my circumstances to be better. And it's coming out your mouth, but that's far from your heart. This, you have to do the work. You have to allow it to happen. That's how you're going to see your provision. That well of water is your provision. It's right there in front of you. I'm done. Thank you, Vincent. We, we talked about this last week. Oh, go ahead, Vincent. Go ahead. No, 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 no. But. The, the, the question I was going to ask is, you know, and, and having been in the military for a long period of time um, and then having to deal with deployments, um, could you show how this relates to a spouse whose husband may be or spouse may be deployed for extended periods of time where they, even though they're married, they're like a single mother without the father or without the spouse there and maybe experiencing some of these same things, maybe not to this, to this extreme, but when they're in those situations like that where spouses are gone for a year, two years, or maybe just not near them or with them because they're in two different locations where that spouse may be like, well, I'm like a single mother right now because he's not here. He's always gone. And I am maybe experience some of this traumatized type stuff that um, Hagar may be experiencing because that, that spouse is not there. So do, do you have anything that you would address to those um, classes uh, or those um, groups of uh, women who may be experiencing that, even though they're married, they're not single, but they have a lifestyle that is indicative of being single because the father is right. gone for an extended period of time 
or just in a whole different geographical location? Uh, Mark, I'm going to let you answer that. <laughs> Sorry about that, Mark. <laughs> no, no, no problem. You know, I'm already ready. Always ready. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, for Vanessa and I, um, I, neither one of us was ever uh, a part, you know, after Manuel being born as far as out of country, but we were not in the same state. So, like I said, some weeks uh, I was in South Carolina, she was in North Carolina, so we was like four hours apart. But, um, um, but like I said, we wasn't out of the country at that, that time. And, um, but for us, you know, it was as uh, Pastor and Lady Joy has talked about, and we talked about last week, it was definitely that communication because, um, it was easier for her to feel like a single parent. Um, um, and I'm telling you, there was there was uh, times to where, you know, like I say, um, like when I would call home, you know, she's in the middle of maybe uh, bathing him or feeding him or getting him ready for the next day or whatever. What I what I was try to do is always look at the time of the day of what was going on. If it was an emergency, yeah, I didn't try to call. I knew kind of what her schedule was throughout the day. Uh, and I tried to. <clears throat> Definitely when she's at work and then knowing that the position that she held of a leadership role, be mindful of that. Um, even in the evening time that I, when I think that she would be all, you know, a lot of times, you know, now that we have these cell phones, you could just text and, you know, and just kind of ask, are you free? Uh, but us, as Lady Joy talked about last um, uh, last week, that uh, that maturity, uh, both of us, you know, definitely was of that age. And, and, and because and I think that has definitely a lot to do with it and also our backgrounds. Of, of being believers, you know, um, because if you're you're not interference or, uh, um, you know, Satan having the opportunity to come in and split you up because, um, you know, because she could have easily said, well, you know, you down in South Carolina, you got all this free time, um, you know, uh, you know, and things and, and, and could run through her mind saying I'm out here at the club or whatever. But she knew I wasn't that type of person. I was a devoted father and a husband. And she knew you know, where I was uh, at all times. It wasn't like, you know, even though I could have, but that wasn't Mark, you know, because when I said I do, you know, that means I don't to any other female in that capacity. Watch it, watch it Mark. Go and ahead. Um, so we knew that about each other. So it wasn't that, you know, I was going to run out, even though, you know, yeah, opportunity could exist, but, you know, that's when you got to be committed, you know, to your, to your marriage because everybody that does is not that. So, um, and so me being mindful of the schedule, um, because like I said, was, a lot of times uh, when we were, you know, because throughout the day, you might only have five, 10 minutes. And, you know, for some people, they can't they can't take that. They want to be you know, they want that me time. And we knew that we had to kind of uh, uh, manage our time and do it wisely because there was just family business that we needed to talk about. There was, you know, trips or me going, you know, TDY for the military because there was some. Uh, weeks, you know, you normally I would try to be home every weekend. And what I mean on weekends, I would get in on Friday evening and I would leave out Sunday morning, probably about three o'clock going back to South Carolina. So to be at work on Monday morning at seven. But there was some time where I would have to be TDY for the military. So there would be some weekends at the most, maybe three weekends that I may have went to where I wasn't able to come home. So completely for three weeks, including the weekends, you know, work days and all that. You know, yes, Vanessa was a single parent. <laughs> And, you know, I know that wasn't easy for her. And all I could do is, you know, like I said, call her, try to keep her encouraged, uh, you know, saying, you know, what I'm going to try to catch up on uh, when I get home. And that that was also the things that, you know, me cutting the grass or changing the oil in the car, you know, you, you got to micromanage that because, you know, me and we talked about the love language. You got to know when you're home, you need to spend time with the family, the spouse, and those things of you want to wash the car, change the oil, <laughs> even cutting grass may not be the priority. And so, and I have to learn how to manage all that as a head of household. And if I have to, you know, sometimes, you know, would have to, uh, and she as a mother had got out there <laughs> and actually cut the yard just so that me and her could spend time or either, you know, all of us could spend time and everything. So, um, definitely, you know, us praying at night, you know, before, you know, we both lay down at night and go to bed because like I said, we was in separate households and just, you know, having that relationship and then us having clear communication because you got to say what's on your mind and what you're thinking, because I know, uh, as a single mother, she wasn't always feeling the utmost and so on. I had to, as a husband to be able to express that and let her express that to me, even though I know I might not did anything, but if she was uptight or whatever, I still got to hear that because I'm head of household. 
uh, I got to be able to take that and not take offense to that because, you know, then again, that's another opportunity for Satan to get in there. So you definitely have to know each other, um, what, you know, um, the ins and the outs. And sometimes you may learn new things, and but you learn how to deal and to cope with that, knowing that in the end that, hey, you're going to have a time together and uh, God is going to, you know, uh, create that opportunity to, to make your marriage whole as a as a husband and wife and also as a family with a child or children. So, yes. Outstanding. Thank you very much, man of God. That was, that that, was Mark. Yes, sir. That was, that was powerful. Thank you so much. I'm a, I want to read this last verse there, and then we're going to, Lamar, then we're going to go back to our uh, other set. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, what's the question? We got, we got several. Okay, go ahead. Okay, we got several questions. And so um, the first one says, this is for a while, from a while back. What advice do you have for single parents who give their children uh, things even when they don't deserve it because of the guilt they have due to the absent parent not being in the child's life, in the children's lives? Um, I can answer that, but I would, I would rather one of the ladies who may have been a single parent say something about that. I would rather. Okay, Tori, you can go ahead. I, mean, I got something, but you can go ahead. <laughs> uh, um, now, read the question to me one more time. What advice do you have for single parents who give their children, their child or children, things even when they don't deserve it because of the guilt they have due to the absent parent not being in the child or the children's lives? Good God, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, what a question. Um, I, I I don't think that that's a, a good thing because you're you're well, especially when they don't deserve it because you are in everything you do with a child you're teaching them a lesson, right? And so, um, hence why we have a lot of um, this generation that is enabled they have this sense of entitlement because, um, and I may be wrong, but um, this sense right. of entitlement comes from um, getting things that you don't deserve. Don't deserve. Um, and had they haven't been taught to earn things. So um, when you can consistently do that, you're teaching them that I can still get what I want, even though I don't deserve it. And so if, for lack of a better way to say it, you are creating a monster. Mm. <laughs> okay. You are creating a monster. Um, and um and you, um, the single parent, because I've I've had to do this myself. You have to look at yourself internally, and um, you have to deal with why that makes you feel guilty. Kids, I mean, yeah, they like things, but they really want time. So don't con. I wouldn't. I wouldn't encourage you to just continue to give them things uh, attached. Like I think Jelana told us this a long time ago. It wasn't about kids. It was in one of the coaching classes sometime last year. She said, tie it to a goal. Oh. If they um, if you know it is something that they want and they truly, truly want, tie it to something. That way they um you are uh you are re what's the, the word I'm not reteaching, but you are um you are shifting their idea of how how it is that they receive the things that they want. And yeah. so you are um, retraining their mind on um, when it comes to that. So I encourage and I pray for whoever it was that, that stated that um, for you, that um, God would just kind of give you a strategy on what to do and how to do for your child. Cause every child is different. Um, but in my opinion, I, I would say you're doing more damage than you are um, good if you continue to give the child something that they want and they don't deserve it. Yeah. And I was, can I add, I was going to add that look, half the battle is recognizing that you're doing it. So that's a good thing. <laughs> At least you're aware now <laughs> because you know, seriously, because I know I've done that. I mean, I've actually done that particular thing of, um, doing things because I wanted my child to have a similar relationship like I had with my dad. And so, but, um, and at one point I was not aware that I was doing that until later on. 
and I start seeing a pattern. So I think that's a good thing that you are aware of it. And so now it's like, okay, I'm aware of it. So I got to make sure that I don't fall back into that pattern again. So. You know, um, we got another question before we go that, to that one. One of the things that jumped out at me in the question is she says it's because of the guilt they have due to the absent parent. What jumped out at me is the guilt. We have to realize that guilt comes from the devil. Amen. So we have to resist the guilt. There is therefore no condemnation, condemnation to them yeah. that are in Christ Jesus. So you got to yeah. resist the enemy, resist that guilt, because guilt will make you do things that you you should not be doing. So you've got to, first of all, you shouldn't be carrying the guilt definitely of the other parent, okay? So that's just absolutely, Amen. the other parent's guilt, Amen. absolutely not. Amen. Then deal with your own guilt, okay? Then your own guilt, because we do carry our own guilt. You can't even allow your own Amen. stuff to cause you to do this. So you really, this is where you need to go see Tori or a therapist and work through dealing with guilt. But this is why and the, resist the enemy. This is why the angel came to Hagar. The, the angel saw the child in a traumatic situation. Right. But before he before he dealt with the child, in fact, he didn't even deal with the child. He wanted Hagar to deal with the child. But he didn't want an angry Hagar to deal right. with the child. That's why he said, I hear the child. What's wrong with you? And then, and then after after this engaging point, now Hagar is capable of guiltless love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, so that was one of the scriptures that I had too, sir. Was that Romans one and four? Because I even remember going to one of the faith con uh, conference, and I remember, uh, you know, there was a young lady that stood up, and she was a single parent, and I think she asked Doctor uh, Winston about that, and that, you know, and I re you remember that scripture that he because mm -hmm. when you have that guilt. No matter, I think whether you're a believer or a non-believer, if you always looking back at the things that you have done in your past, even though you are a believer, you're gonna keep always pulling that down, thinking you less than how you was explaining how Hagar was, even though she was a servant. But if she felt that she was a a, a, a believer in Christ, because the scripture said for those who are in Christ, so and you know, and it goes on down because I think the one through four. Kind of talks all about you know that there are you know but it it, it it specifically says therefore now there is no condemnation no guilt verdict or no punishment for those who are in christ jesus who believe in him as a personal lord and savior you know so you you and now I, and i i was um thinking about this earlier because nowadays in time when you go to probably even approach a single parent that's unsaved right now, when you talk to them about that, they're not going to understand it. So our first thing will be, you know, to get them saved to accept Christ and we will still have right. to talk to them through the right. word of God. And then we can probably possibly come with this scripture once they kind of understand, because when, if you just go right now and just, as you said, beat them over the head with the scripture, they're going to like, OK, this is Greek to me. I, I don't understand, you know. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. Going back to um, what you were talking about, uh, Pastor, in your life application of Robin Payne of his power. And I remember you saying that pain has three associates. Right. It has shame, guilt and blame. Good God. So, and with Dallas just mentioned this over here to me, she was talking about, you know, that if the parent is feeling that guilt because they did something that caused the father not to be there. And it's not that just like here. Abraham did not, it's not that Abraham didn't want to be there, but he was not guilt, but whatever the case may be, it's kind of different. But if, if that is a guilt, you know, and I'm going back to what you were teaching, it's associated with some type of pain that you may be going through or something you may be experiencing. And I don't, I, I'm using pain because that's what you were teaching about robbing pain of his power. So in this instance, you know, it's, you know, in, in this guilt thing, um, buying these things, I think what Thelos was saying, you know, buying these things is a way of, I may be feeling some self, self blame for the situation that me and the child is in. And how do I write this situation with the child? Not necessarily myself, but it's doing it for the child to make yourself feel better about what you may have done. Not saying you, you did it all, but what, what you contributed to the relationship or the father not being there. Um, 
I'm no therapist and I'm going to leave that to Tori. So I'm not clinically, you know, this matter going back to the life application message. You know, I take a lot of notes here and I wrote those things. <laughs> Love you, man. And you say, hey, we, you know, and I, and I go back to what Pastor said. Somehow you have to find a way to take a higher ground uh, from the guilt, from the pain, from the shame and all of that. Find a higher ground, get on a different plane. And, and, and don't do things to protect that pain. So this right. buying right. of gifts is protecting that guilt or that pain that you may be feeling because of the situation or the experience that you may be in. So again, like Tori said, he creates a monster. I think, you know, in here, uh, yeah. you know, a wild donkey, you know. <laughs> well, I, mean, I want to go back really quick, if I can. You, the point that Jelana made earlier, she said that, um, um, she said it jokingly, but she was serious when she said, um, you have to, um, I think she said you have to deal with it every, every hour or something like that. Um, um, while, while we are addressing scripture, I, I did go back to the, the natural for a moment and, and, but it's more so about the healing because when I, when I, when you think about it, um, in, uh, um, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just a little tired. <laughs> um, but um, um, when you think about the question that the person asked and um, addressing the guilt, um, if you don't go, if you don't be conscious about addressing that guilt, uh, I'm trying to remember. I can't even remember the point I was trying to make. Um, you have to. You have to be on board and consciously aware about addressing your own issues so that you don't allow it to spill over into the child. You don't allow that seed to be sown into the child. So just like you engage the principal, you also have, you have, you engage in the principal for spiritual growth. You also have to engage those natural things for your your soul your uh, the the growth of your soul you have to mend the heart amen um because out of out of, um out of the bible says out of the, the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so if you got a bunch of crap in your heart then it's a bunch of crap gonna come out your mouth and that stuff is gonna go into your child and then when they get older you i heard i heard a young lady um I was talking to on the phone. She said she got upset because her, her kids um, said some things to her that she didn't like. And she said um, she couldn't understand why. And because we were on the phone with other people, I didn't say nothing to her. But when I got off, I was like, you talk to your mama the same way. Right, you right, talk right. to her mama the same way. At some point, yeah. somebody got to break the cycle. Right. Yeah. So what you what you put into your child, you're going to get back. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And so, um, um, I, I'm sorry. I, I I hope I didn't sound offensive to on um, the person, but um, I think uh, I think with Jelani and Rathillis, and I think Brother Mark made some really good points in addressing the guilt within yourself. Because I did think about what um um, I think Pastor Joy was talking that that person is probably struggling with thinking that they did something to make this person walk away from them. I'm assuming that the person walked away and it and it's um nothing that you know tragic happened. But um no matter how much you give to your child, it's not going to take the place of this other person. Um so um the flat the first step I think Jelana said the first step is admitting um, so you recognize what's happening. So just do the work. Um, be conscious about doing the work so that you can heal and that um, you can reestablish um, some of those um, principles into your child before um, the time passes you by. I mean, it can still be done later on. but So when Jelana said that thing about recognizing, one of the things that popped into our conversation here is, Parents, single parents and mothers have to recognize it before the child recognizes it. If the yeah. child recognizes that's what you're doing, they will leverage that and keep using that to uh, get things from you. Yes, sir. So 
And I have to recognize it before they recognize what you're doing and why you're doing it. Because once they recognize it, 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 it's like game on at that point. And I'm going to use this separation, this single mother thing against you and, you know, and leverage that to get whatever I want as long as I want. You know, so recognizing it before the child come into the knowledge and start recognizing it, um, you know, and then the, the, the one last thing I want to say on that is Ow. going back to your pain thing, Pastor, and I know this is not about pain, it's about single mothers, but this is kind of touching into it. But you had mentioned also, I told you I'll take some copious notes here. Uh, you said you should not, pain should not be the justification for our behavioral responses and right. actions we take towards others. So if this guilt is part of that, don't let the guilt become the response or the action towards the things that, that cause you to do these for children. You know, Amen. and again, recognizing that so you don't fall into that. Because again, me and Rathelis are not separated, but y'all know Ventrell, he is very, very, very clever. And and once he recognized he can get mommy to daddy and daddy to mommy, and we're in the same house. So I can imagine if you carry a guilt or have some guilt that's involved in that, then yes, once if if a child notices that, that may be game on for that child. And like Tori said, you're creating this wild donkey not only in this child, but you're also creating it in yourself because you're bringing it on yourself where you become. Pain, if we are not careful, can change us into a new creature. Mm. Don't let the guilt change you into a new creature with your child. Outstanding, man of God. Kayla, you better jump in if you want to. Yes, ma'am. So I was I was gonna come from a different perspective because I I was raised under a single mother and a single father, and I had a lot of single mothers around me in general. And I would just put an emphasis on the healing portion because like, as my mother tr tr transitioned from like being with my father and being by herself in the beginning when like we, so my mom, my mother became emotionally and like physically abusive. So in the beginning, like she was trying to, how you, how y'all said, like just push through it, but she, she should have took that time to heal, but we're children. So we can't be like, mama, you need to heal. Like go heal. <laughs> We didn't, we, we didn't understand what was going on ourselves because we're developing and we're relying on her to teach us if I, while my father wasn't there. So as she would have these moments where like sooner or later, it's going to overflow. It's, something's going to come out based off what you're not dealing with. So she had these moments where like it would happen and like she'll maybe be like verbally abusive or physically abusive. And at first, I don't know how, but it was God. I'm telling you, it was God. We would say, literally, would say, "Oh no, it's okay," because we understood what she was dealing with. How it was, I, I really don't understand. The only thing I can say was Jesus, because like you're, if you're being like physically and verbally abused, it's like, why are you saying, and you're a child, like, no, it's okay, mother's going through that. But we recognize like being separated from my father, that's causing a lot on her. But over time, we're like, no, this is still not okay. Like, no, she can't continue or. She can't continue to do this to us because one is not our fault. And two, you're supposed to be taking care of us. So that healing portion is, oh. is like immeasurable. Even now, as like I'm developing and um, standing on the word, going through the word, I'll be asking the Lord, like, why am I certain ways? And then he'll revert back to, oh, remember your mother or these incidents that happened between my mother and father. And I'd be like, dang, like sometimes you don't realize the effect of the environment or the guidance of um, the parent, whether it's your mother and father, until you get older. Right. Or your process of being better. Now you like, dang, Lord, I didn't know I had all these trees just from that. Yeah. And like for a long time, I was struggling. I was like, Lord, something ain't right. I'll be talking about like, Lord, I don't know what it is, but something right within me. I needed to be fixed. I need, I needed to come out. I don't know what's going on. And then after like inquiring and after like, like you said, making a continuous decision, I'm like, okay, what it is? And then he reveals to me that that's it. I'm like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. The more I've been at the church, the more I see how parenting is super influential to a child for so that healing portion. And also I have to agree with Lady Joy because I was thinking the same thing. Uh, when her eyes were open. And for me, with my mother, I seen like, now looking back, I'm like, 
Mama, if you would have just healed, you know what I'm saying? You could see like the opportunities and how, you know, things could have been better. And even like, I don't want to take too much time, but even for my father, because I stayed with my father when he was single, when, when he was single, he was taking care of us. And it was like the same thing. And even to this day, I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And looking at how it spread to my brother, because now my brother is a, he was a single father at one point. And then I have a sister who's a single mother. And then I have another brother who's a single father-ish. I don't know how to explain it. But <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say something real quick before um, we go. Um, I, I was going to say that actually when um, Pastor Joy was talking, I mean, I Either Pastor George, Pastor Ben was talking about when the angel said, um, uh, what did he say to the woman? I forgot. What ail it be? What ail it be? <laughs> um, I was going to say just what Kayla said. It wasn't meant for me to say it, though. It was meant for her to say it. But if I could just say for a moment, the emotions and things that we go through um, are not our enemy, although the enemy uses those emotions to keep us bound. Um, your, your emotions are warning signals. They tell you what you're missing. They tell you what you need. So um, just pay attention to how you feel. And like Kayla said, get be healed, get healed, get some healing, go through the process and get some healing so that your emotions, the enemy can't use your emotions to tear another person down. Amen. Magnificent. Now we've got, I, I know it's time pastor, but we've got three more questions. If anybody has to go, don't worry about it. Y'all go. And I love you, Tori. I know you're tired. If y'all, cause you, and you talk all day long. So I know, I know you might be tired. Uh, it's okay. If anybody has to go, I just want to get to these three questions and then we're going to shut it down. Go. Okay. The next question. What if the damage has already been done to your children for years? How do I get healing for the damage already inflicted on young adult children? So my question is, I'm going to read the question again. So, but one of the things I wasn't clear about, are you trying to get healing for yourself or healing for the adult children? So if you could clarify that, All right. but I'm going to read it again. But well, while she's, he or she is clarifying that, go to the next question. Okay. The next question, what do you do when the child or children are adults now? And then the absent parent decides to step in and establish a relationship with them. I was gonna say little. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. Okay. What's the harm in it? Listen that's to the heart. You know, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jelan. No, I was gonna say that's how you know you got some unforgiveness going on or some. Right. That's that what I was gonna say. Right. You're not gonna let the other <laughs> parent parent. I remember right. um when I was going through that process. And I remember I used to let Aaliyah go with her father during Christmas, vac whenever he wanted her, really. And I remember I had a friend who was like, I can't believe you do that without you. And I was like, what? And so what it was, when, when it came to her child's father, she demanded that she was there everywhere they went. And that's because she had feelings for him. And so right. I didn't have no feelings for the his <laughs> so it's like my thing is this is i mean this, you're the parent so i don't you don't you know what i mean like i'm not gonna say no you can't have her for the holidays and why like you know what i'm saying now if you're gonna hurt or harm her that's a different story but other than that that's the parent but that's how you can always tell and i've been around other single women as well is that you can always tell that it's because there's some unresolved issues it's un unforgiveness and they need healing in that area because they're the other parent <laughs> but let me ask you well, that question was about adult children right it says what do you yeah. do when ch child or children are adults now they're adults yeah. then the absent parent decides to step in and establish a relationship with them now this was yeah. about adults so definitely what you say let them because that's not your decision now yeah because right? I was going to say what Jelana said and that ain't your decision no more because they yeah. adults it's not up to you it's up to them don't be but see, even if they weren't adults, what Jelana said is still applicable, right? But but see, this is where if we and 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 uh, and and, uh, and we're not diminishing the hurt or the pain from the years of any of these people, but the truth of the matter is, as Jelana explained it, you are probably still very angry if mm -hmm. you monitor these grown folks for being around their your ex husband or your ex wife, um, or your ex girlfriend, whoever the the other parent to want to monitor that or to want to 
it seems like you want to pay them back. Like they haven't gotten everything that they deserve. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I, I need to give you some more of this. So, so that's why now we have to go back and evaluate our hearts again. Yeah. And if right. I can address really quick what Pastor Joyce said, if they were younger, I, I you said, I think you said it's the same thing. I I differ on opinions when it comes to younger kids. Be, and the only reason why I differ is because you you have to really be careful with younger kids because I have seen so many times where parents will come in. They'll stay for like a week or two and they gone for like four or five months, a couple of years, and then they want to come back. You mm -hmm. at that point, you have to put the child's uh, emotional and mental health first before mm -hmm. the parent. So your, point, your point is about stability. Of the yeah, child. it's about stability. You still need to work on that unforgiveness. <laughs> so that part still applies. But when it comes to younger children, children, you do have to put you have to consider them first before you allow that because you don't want you don't want them to be bouncing in and out of their lives, in my opinion. That's, that's a constant heartbreak and disappointment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perpetual Thank heartbreak. Mm -hmm. So, but to your point that you just made, that he, if a parent is not healed, they may not make, they may not assess whether that parent is stable properly. They might decide that they're stable because they want them in their life and they want to, they would be stable in the child's life. They just not stable in the, in the mama's yeah. life. You're right. Yes. You know but the point is very well taken. Mm -hmm. So they need, they need to be healed. And if it is a, I, that, that's because children okay. are messed up because of that right. disappointment. That's a good point. Next okay. Question. Tell me to move on. So the next question is, so is, is it safe to say that the reason single mothers or fathers have issues with their children is due to them not hearing from God and allowing him to open their eyes? And of course, this was, came from a while back. Of course. Of course, that's the, uh, of course, that's the answer. Um, but the reason, yes. However, I want to make it, I want to make it clearer than that. I don't want to, when, when we're talking about opening one's eyes, we're talking about seeing all kinds of, I think it was a, one of you all said opportunities and, and, and forward motions, and great things that are available to you. That's where we, we're, we're taking that open your eyes and she saw the well to see provision and opportunities and refreshment and, and some new things flowing into her life. That's where they open the eyes. But the open the eyes didn't come until the till the till she and the angel had she had this angelic uh, uh, encounter and then the angel told her now you pick the child up. It's hard to see God's stuff with when your heart is angry or or, or frustrated or madness. It's hard to see God's stuff because the well wasn't there. The well had already been there, but He opened her eyes to it. So it's critical that one is healed and made well so God can now open your eyes to wonderful opportunities around you. Okay, now back to the other question we got clarity. So it was the adult children. So let me read this again. What if the damage has already been done to your adult children for years? How do I get healing for the damage already inflicted on young adult children? I would hate to... I, 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 Tori, are you going to say something? Go ahead, no, I'm trying... I'm so you're saying the, the person is asking the question about adult children, but they're saying, how do I get the healing? It says, how do I get healing for the damage already inflict, inflicted on young adult children? Go to therapy. Is, uh, <laughs> is that damage that they've inflicted on the adult I'm children? I'm that, assuming that's that's my, my, my question also. Did, did they, we're going to do this one more time did let them let them answer this did you and do you feel like you inflicted the pain on the children and at that point we would have the, the most clarity and somebody would be able to respond. i don't think she can respond but i don't think she feels like she inflicted the pain on the children so uh -huh. i would say if it's there if you're looking to heal the damage for the adult children probably need to process how they feel in therapy Mm -hmm. And then the parent probably needs to process how they feel in therapy as well. I mean, it it can still be done. Yeah, 
I was going to say my first response was, look, I think the most powerful tool and the most and, I've, and I've, I'm a witness. So I'm speaking from witnessing the most powerful tool and the most powerful weapon as a parent is intercession prayer. I, I mean, gonna, yeah, I've seen it happen. I've seen the heart change. I mean, without me confronting, always being confrontational or all these different things. I see that the father, our father, heavenly father works it out. I mean, I know there's a spiritual piece of it and then there's the faith without works, right? And so you got to have the works to it, which is the therapy and other things. But I do know that if you start off in the spirit realm, and th- but you can't take it back though. But once you release it and intercede, you can't go back and intervene and try to do it and handle it your way because that means you took it away from the father. So that part, I remember just, I mean, that's just parenting. I just know that, you know, sometimes when situations come up, you want to go back and intervene, but no. You go back, you know, like you said, along with the therapy, but you go back because the God, you can already deliver it over to God and prayer. And so my famous scriptures is in Ephesians. I think we did that early last year and I use that for intercession and I've seen it. I mean, literally stuff because my child likes to tell on herself. So I know all kinds of stuff, which I don't think is a bad thing in a way, because now I know how to pray. Right. But at the end of the day, it does bother me. So the most effective way, and I can start seeing the heart change. But as soon as I try to put my hands in it, oh gosh, should be all kinds of stuff going on. Kayla. <laughs> so yeah, I just say that that's the most powerful weapon. So as a the, the healing is for the adult, right? Like they want the the adult child to be healed. Yes. So I would say um, it would have to be like you said, a conscious decision of that child to be able to want to recognize um, that they need healing in that area. And also it can it can be like a two way street, like as their parent. Now that you're in a state to understand that that happened when they were younger to be a part of that process. So y'all can start unpacking some things that can help the healing go faster and help get some understanding and like some peace. Like because on both ends, if the uh, the parent at that time didn't know, like they were unaware, they were blinded by their pain or whatever they were going through. You can express that to your child and your child can at a certain point be understanding of that once they get past their emotions and want to move on and become better. Cause yeah, like it's by, it's literally by God. Yeah. I could, I could be mad. And I sometimes I wonder why I'm not bitter, but it's Jesus. Like I could be, literally be bitter, just a bitter person but the the Lord has like helped me and shielded me to be understanding and not like hold it against my parents. Yes, it sucks. And yes, I'm mad that I have to deal with certain things. But at the same time, I'm like, they didn't know no better. Or I, I, told you, I, was I, would, I would like that was that was that was really powerful. She is that adult child. Right. She's the adult child. And so I want everyone who is who is listening. I want you to grab these principles grab these suggestions or recommendations, I don't know what to call them, and see how they can work for you. But back to intercessory prayer, prayer is critical. Um, when we were, when I was, my children did not care for me when they were younger and things were said about me to them or around them. And, but, but intercessory, it was prayer that caused them at a later date as they got older to become, to, to realize what was said around them wasn't true. And they now they fought. Now they're in such love with me. It's like we were never estranged. So so it's going to be prayer that's going to really fix that. All right, all right. Let's let's uh, let's get out of here. We're not going to do the uh, takeaways tonight because we're coming right back next week with the same subject matter. We're going to come back next week with the same subject matter. We're just going to go a little bit further. All right, all right. Um, um, Joy is going to pray us out, and uh, Jelana is going to call for souls. All right, Jelana, go ahead. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So what we just talked about tonight, you, I'm, we are a strong believer that you do not have to do life alone. And the way you don't have to do life alone is first, you got to believe that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, first of all. Okay. And then be part of a church family. So if you're, if you have not said the salvation prayer, or if you want to say it again, okay, you can. So repeat after me. Lord, I come to you now just as I am. You know my life. You know how I live. Forgive me, Lord. I repent of my sins. 
I believe Jesus Christ is the son of God, that he died for my sins. And on the third day, he was raised from the dead. Yes, he was. Lord, come into my heart. Live your life in me and through me. From now on, from this day forward, I belong to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you said that prayer, you have received salvation. The other thing is now you allow it. You're, you, you, you did a transference. You allow right. God to enter into your world. And yes. so um, let us know that you have received salvation so we can go ahead and send you some material as well. Free material. And congratulations. Amen. 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 We're so happy. Please <laughs> let us know if you accepted Jesus. So we're um, finished for tonight. Thanks for sticking it out with us today. We went a little long, but I know you didn't feel it because this discussion was robust. And you know, when you have these robust discussion, time flies. What's the saying? Time flies when you're having fun. So we're done for tonight. We will see you on Sunday um, for um, nine o'clock life application class. And 11 o'clock worship service. So, Father, we just thank you right now for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the word that we heard. We thank you, God, that it went into the good soul of our heart and didn't go by the wayside into stony or thorny ground. We thank you, Lord, that your word will not return for it, but it will accomplish what it is set out to do in us to hear. Now, I decree that we are not just hearers of your word, but we're also doers of your word. We hear your voice and the voice of a stranger we will not follow. Now, I dispatch our angels to go before us, to lead us, guide us, and protect us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, everybody, have a good night. We love you. Good night, beautiful people. Forgive us. Forgive me for going over. I love you.